Welcome back to this new tutorial. Today I want to show you a few Blender shortcuts that aren't very well known. They can save you a lot of time and improve your 3D workflow. So let's not lose any further time and get right into it. Alright, so I prepared this very simple scene with just a hydrant and the spotlight. And if I want to make the spotlight point towards the hydrant, I can simply use the shortcut Shift T, which allows me to quickly align the light to point towards my cursor. So let's also take a look at this in render preview. So when I press Shift T, I can move this around and quickly point it towards whatever I want. This also works with multiple lights selected, so I have eight lights, press Shift T, and I can quickly align all of them to point towards the same center. I think this is a really valuable shortcut that can save you a lot of time and hassle. Here I have another scene with an animated character. And I want to show you how you can quickly switch between the timeline and the graph editor. So simply hover over the timeline and press Ctrl Tab to quickly switch to the graph editor. So I can now make detailed adjustments and then simply use Ctrl Tab again to get back to the timeline. By default it switches to the dope sheet, but if you want to get back to the regular timeline, you can use the shortcut Shift F12 to quickly revert to the regular timeline. So press Shift F12 again to get back to the dope sheet or Control Tab to get to the graph editor. I think this shortcut can save you a ton of time if you are doing a lot of animation in Blender. The next shortcut can also save you a lot of time. So let's say you have multiple objects and you want to make the same change on all of them. Like for example disable the material offset. You can do so by selecting all of them. And when I now disable the material offset you can see that it still only affects the active selection. So in order to affect all of the objects at the same time simply hold down ALT while I click on the material offset and you can see that it now affects all the objects at the same time. This works with basically any options so we could also hold down ALT while I delete this wireframe modifier and it's now deleted on all the selected objects. We can also add in a new modifier, for example a subdivision surface and before I click on it I simply hold down ALT and it's now added to all the selected objects. This doesn't only work with modifiers, so we could for example also go to the object properties and change the display type from textured to wire and before I click on it again hold down ALT and now all the monkey heads are affected simultaneously. Next I want to show you that a simple right click can do way more than you might think. So depending on what object that you have currently selected, you get different options when you right click. So for example if you have the camera object selected, you can right click and quickly adjust the focal length. So let's go within the camera view and you can see that we can quickly zoom in and out without having to go to the camera properties. So I think this is really valuable. And another option that we have is to quickly set the focus point. So again with the camera selected, right click and choose depth of field distance picker, which will give us this eyedropper that quickly allows us to set the focus point of the camera. Next let me show you what we can do if we have a light object selected. So let me select this spotlight and with a right click I can quickly adjust the light power so make it way brighter or darker and you can also play around with the light radius but in this case I want to keep it on the default and instead play around with the light size so maybe make it a bit bigger and use the light blend to make it as soft as possible. So I think it is really valuable to have those options always available with a right click in the 3D viewport without always having to go to the light properties. And finally let me show you what you can do if you have an empty selected. So in this case the whole scene is parented to this empty and let's say I want to adjust the size of this empty. So I want to make it a bit smaller. You can see that the whole scene follows along if I scale it down. So instead I can right click and choose adjust empty display size which allows me to resize the empty without affecting the scale of it. So if you take a look at the scale of this empty right here even if I adjust the size of it, the scale always stays at 1, which can be really handy to resize any empty. Whenever you are working with the node editor in Blender, you can select any node and press M to quickly mute it and M again to re-enable it. This allows you to temporarily disable any node and see the difference that it makes. 
It can also be really valuable to find out what each node in the node setup is doing and how it affects the end result. I use this all the time when working with shaders, geometry nodes or in the compositor in Blender. Finally, I just quickly want to mention that you can download all of the 3D assets I ever created completely for free from my Blender Kit profile. They are all CC0 licensed, so you can use them for whatever you want and you don't even need to credit me. So I'm gonna put the link to my Blender Kit profile into the video description. And with this link you even get a 10% discount on a premium subscription of Blender Kit, which will give you access to even more 3D models, materials and other assets that you might use for your 3D projects. Alright, so that's it for this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye!